what I will be uh, showing is an open LDAP address book, uh, a Twitter feed that displays uh, your tweets on the other screen of the DigiM phones. And I will also be uh, showing you uh, an app that's created by DigiM and is part actually of the DPMA that gives you uh, statistics on queues. Uh, the apps that they are created within the um, community you can find on asterixexchange.com. As you can see, there are already a lot of apps. Okay, that was a joke. Um, quick about me, I'm working as an IT manager, nonprofit organization, and I am a developer uh, uh, of self-employment. Let's go back and give you some history about uh, app development. Last year at Astricon, uh, Digim announced uh, the possibility of creating apps for their phones. That was a session where a lot of people, uh, that a lot of people attended. Uh, a few of them are still left here. Um, then we had, uh, then at that time there was the firmware uh, 1.2. In March 2013, there was a firmware upgrade to 1.3. And that changed also the uh, API for the DigiM phones. Um, it changed a lot. It changed so much that my Twitter feed app that I just had finished didn't, totally didn't work anymore. I had to rewrite it. Um, no, that was not such a big deal. It's only 200 lines of code, and I had to modify uh, the half, uh, one half. So 100 lines had to be modified. That's nothing. Um, now, on Friday, past Friday, they brought out uh, firmware 1.4 and also API 1.4, again with a lot of changes. Uh, we can do a lot more now uh, with, uh, for creating apps, but I'm lucky all my apps are still working. I've installed uh, yesterday evening uh, the 1.4 firmware on those phones I have, in, have here with me, and my apps are still working, so I can do my presentation. Um, let's begin with the negative points about creating apps for phones, for desktop phones. You have two limitations. One limitation is uh, that you actually don't have a large uh, screen. Um, as you can see, those screens, you can't put a lot of uh, text or images on it. You can't say, I'm going to put all the Facebook updates on it. Uh, I want to show that. That's, that the text is too long. A, Twitter, uh, a tweet is ideal because it's only limited to 140 characters, and that's exactly fitting on uh, those screens. So uh, another uh, limitation you have is uh, you actually only have the keypad for entering uh, for having the user entering uh, input of data. Uh, so don't expect the user that he will be, uh, will, will be writing a lot of text on a keypad. So there are exactly the, uh, the two limitations uh, you deal with when you're creating apps for uh, desktop phones. Uh, I'll do a, sh a short demo of the Open LDAP address book, and then I'll show you actually the code, uh, how it's made. Um, as you can see, uh, this one is a D40, that's a D70. The screen, the screen size uh, differ and are different. Uh, that makes it, you have to uh, have that in mind when you're creating apps. I will come back on that later. Uh, on the D70, I have an easy uh, button to go to the app. I will, um, here on the D40, I have to do some more pushing to go to apps. But with the new firmware, there will be a shortcut to go uh, directly to your app. Uh, as you can see, um, D40 is in Dutch, my native language. The D70 is in English. Uh, the app is made uh, in that way that it does automatically translate uh, the yeah, the labels and the buttons I've made. I will show you later how that works. Uh, I just type some input. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can untype input, but as you see, uh, you're only with a keypad. I will search myself. Um, only have to put a few letters. Um, these buttons are called soft 
buttons. I will need that too. I do a search. Um, it shows me uh, how many numbers are found. And uh, I have a list on which I can just go uh, on uh, and actually do a new search or dial. If I dial. We're off gambling and getting drunk. That was yesterday evening. Um, OK, that's how it works. Uh, uh, that's an open LDAP address book. It's very, very easy. Uh, it's only a hobby project of me, so uh, don't expect too much. As you can see, it's actually written in 97 lines of code uh, with white lines within. Uh, I don't go very in detail on this. Uh, you don't seem to be all that kind of great developers that are interested in, or am I wrong? I want to go in depth on the source if you want, but I think I'll uh, Showing more apps. Or... Yeah, the code is online. She is on asterixexchange.com. When you download the app, you can actually you have the code, but I still have to update it. Hey, uh, can we get a raise of hands for everyone who is a developer in the room? Half. Oh, okay. okay. Um, let's show you some things. First, you, uh, I initiate some uh, global objects that are uh, created by Digium, uh, like the app uh, object. Is, um, I will be using that for uh, doing the translation of uh, the different uh, languages. Uh, the util I use mostly for debugging, because I can send some output. And the screen is actually for building up screens. Um, well, first I'll show you what actually an app is, uh, how it's what you need for an app. An app is actually just a zip file. You need it within the zip file two files, an app JSON, what is a configuration file, and then something that's actually the JavaScript uh, source. Other files you can include are icons and language files. Uh, this is how the uh, address book app uh, looks like. You can add a different uh, image, uh, image icon for uh, the D40, D50, D70, that are the icons that are uh, being displayed when I'm going um, on the screen. This is the icon file. Uh, so, um, go back, go back to my presentation. Yeah, here it is. Um, yeah, OK. Let's go back to the source. Uh, the JSON, here it says the name that I will be using when I call it. Uh, There's a configuration file. Uh, the display name is just the uh, name that how it's been displayed on, in the menu. Uh, this is the file that it has to run when uh, the app has is, uh, is been loaded. The type is foreground. Uh, it does all, always have to be foreground. You can't say background. Uh, if you want to use the background, uh, background screen, the idle screen, then here you have to set as idle is true. And then you have here uh, the icon files that I will be reading in. Uh, OK, actually, the source now, uh, app util and screen, I did already. Uh, exit after background, yes, it, this is true, because the app must stop running when it's um, backgrounded. It doesn't have to use the idle screen, so uh, I can. Stop using it. Here is the URL where uh, the actually search is done. It's an internal address now. I put up a, a title. Uh, when the app starts, you see a little title. Um, and as you can see here, I use uh, the app and t function, its translation function. And it actually reads uh, within the uh, string, within the uh, local uh, code. Uh, it will be reading here the keys. Uh, so in T title is directory open LDAP, and in uh, Dutch it will be the address book uh, open LDAP. Uh, as you can see, it just reads here T title. Um, like I was showing the Dutch one, uh, the English one, that's easier for you. Uh, like here, when I'm showing how many numbers are found, I can actually define there will be a, a string that is a variable. So you can uh, have put variables uh, within labels that are uh, being translated. Uh, 
this is just an input field where the uh, user is um, putting in a search. I said first upper key, first character doesn't be, uh, have to be an upper key. I set my soft key uh, to do the actual search function. Uh, so put foc focus on it. Uh, I also created a list where the results will be uh, and be displayed. Uh, when the app is foregrounded, it's actually listening uh, to an event. There's the Digium event. Uh, it's just a, a listener and it's observing. I got an event, it's foregrounded. What do I have to do? I have to uh, in, do the, run the start screen function. The start screen function starts with clearing the window. Uh, so that's it's totally clean, and I can put my uh, buttons and my labels in it. I just uh, put the title back. Um, I make a group um, for, of items uh, that's easy for um, making a layout really looking tight. Else you have to define uh, the layout for every uh, single item, and now I can gather them together in a group. Um, Nothing about that. So I put a label that's also just a translation function. Uh, I add them to the group, group search, and I'm adding, adding them to the foreground window. That's easy. The search function is what is happening when I push the button search after inserting some text. Um, it's clearing the window again. I feel like a window cleaner today. Uh, here it does run the get addresses function I will be showing later on uh, that it's actually the, the search that's been done. Uh, then I add the search results. Uh, that's the, the list with the name and the numbers. I add them uh, to the window. I set the column widths. As you can see, uh, the column widths are defined uh, in a um, relative way to the width of the, the width of the screen, the width of the screen, because uh, if I say well, it has to be 70 pixels, uh, then I have a large wide border under the 70, and under the 40, the end of my characters will be not be displayed because they are hidden uh, because the screen is too small. There are some things you, uh, yeah, you learn when you are developing. Uh, same here when I'm uh, making the uh, group searches and label uh, the labels I also define the height of the uh, of the items in a relative way because the screen uh, uh, the font size on a d70 is uh, 1.2 larger than on a d40 and if you put them in an uh, absolute way the spacing between uh, the different parts is also uh, messed up Okay, uh, so that uh, is this. I'm, I clear my soft keys, that are the, the keys that are beneath uh, the screen, uh, and I add a um, dial uh, uh, key for dialing. Uh, when I push it, uh, it, has, it does have to do uh, the dial number function, and I just also had a new search key from when I didn't find the result I was expecting. The dial number function for actually dialing uh, the number that uh, I found is uh, easy. I get the selected row uh, out of the list, and then I get the number that was been displaying. It was the field one. It was the second field, but they are counting from zero. And then actually the dialing is within uh, this line. I just say Digim punt phone dial. Which number does it have to dial? Um, it has to background the, um, uh, the screen so that the actually dial screen that Digim is providing for all your calls can be in, uh, on front. But you actually can uh, overrule that. Uh, if I don't background my app, then my screen will be, still be displayed. And you can actually uh, doing uh, modifying your uh, own screen so you can modify the screen that you're making uh, during a call. Um, and I display some debug function, uh, some debug info, info for me. Uh, or is it still ringing as picked up? The actually search function, um, how does the app get uh, the addresses? How does it connect to the OpenLDAP uh, address book? The actually connection is done uh, through a PHP script that, was, uh, that is running. I don't 
I can't let uh, the app connect directly to uh, the open LDAP, but I can send a net request, uh, a post or a getter, uh, to a PHP script that actually does connect with the open LDAP and returns, returns the results from the search and JSON, and JSON format, and then uh, the app can uh, go on with it. So I make a request object. I'm saying, yeah, uh, which URL does it have to go through? It's the URL already uh, defined, and I just add uh, the value of my input field uh, from the search. Uh, I open the request. I'm listening on which uh, status it is. If it has four, then it has been ready. Uh, if uh, the status is 200, from uh, we get a uh, correct result back. Uh, page is found and is working. Uh, then I just do some debugging, and that says to me, I got your addresses. I do uh, the JavaScript eval function to make them a JSON format. Um, I clear my search results. I set on the first line of the list uh, with the two um, columns. On the first line, I actually said uh, we found the, the, the amount of, the, we found those numbers, and here it's then uh, the actually amount of numbers uh, added with uh, the numbers we have found. That was the part that was in the uh, string file here. It's this, uh, this it's, uh, you, I let you see how easy it is to add a variable to a label uh, within translation. Uh, that's no problem. Then I just run through all the addresses it has found and I put them uh, within the list. If it didn't work, uh, I'd do some debugging. That's actually how the address book is working. What are my plans with your address book uh, further? Now with, um, Actually, we have to, I have to modify it on the PHP side that I can actually show uh, more than one uh, phone number for the same uh, person. That wasn't, isn't not now uh, like that. It's only so, uh, showing uh, one number. Uh, and it's actually on the, on the app itself, I will be making that when you start typing in the input field, that actually uh, the results are being listed already uh, under the input field so that you don't have to push the search button, but that you have uh, an interactive response on what you are typing within the input uh, search field. That is what I'll... And that can be done with a new uh, API that has been released Friday. But that, that was a little too short time uh, to do that uh, right now. Do you already have questions? Or do we really believe that to the end? I see uh, the moderator panicking. I wasn't, uh, <laughs> we didn't agree that like that. Okay, uh, I show you the Twitter app. Yeah. I made an online. Um, here I'm using a form because uh, like the open LDAP address book, it, the, the app is not directly connect, connecting to Twitter. Uh, it's always also again a web service, a web page in uh, PHP that is connecting uh, to, the, um, to, the, to Twitter. Um, I have a username for uh, the web page uh, and a password. And I have a list then wherein I can choose if I want to display my full timeline or uh, I just want to uh, show uh, my own tweets. Oh, no, 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 not the test. There's a little delay on the screen and that's uh, why. Okay. Um, as you can see, it remembers what I have inserted. And on the list, I can do a change. And I can say, give me the full timeline, only my mentions or my tweets, or my timeline without my own tweets. And when I submit this, it's actually showing uh, on the other screen my tweets. And every five seconds, I get the next tweet. And afterwards, I get uh, when they are. Uh, it's at the end, it reloads my tweets and it will be starting uh, going again. Yeah, that's Dutch. Okay. 
Um, how does that work? There we go. As you can see, the um, what is different here is, is that the has idle is a true and not a false because it is using uh, the idle screen. And uh, that makes when I have to write here digim app.exit after the background, you have to be false. I don't want the app to be closed when it's backgrounded. No, I want to keep it running and displaying my tweets. Um, this is where I read uh, the local config in. I'm actually storing the username and the password that are, has been that is inserted uh, at the, by the user on the phone, so that um, he doesn't have to uh, re-enter it every time when he opens the app. It's just it's stored on the phone. Even when you uh, do an upgrade from the firmware, uh, the information, the settings will still be stored. Uh, if it, the app doesn't find any settings, I uh, use the defaults function to already insert some default uh, values. Those are empty, but I could say, uh, yeah, I can insert, uh, insert in what I want. I define the timeout between uh, um, the, the time that there is between displaying the tweets, how many tweets it has, does have to show, 19, and then it has to start again. I can say 50, I can make it five. Uh, I actually have to use the idle window and I have to make uh, store that into a variable I'm making some texts. This is the form I'm uh, creating for uh, inserting the user data. Um, as you can see, it's really easy. I, it's, I want to display following text as, la as a label in front of the field. Uh, username, so I don't have to uh, create a label. No, the, the form object is automatically creating the label for me. I could uh, set it also uh, app and t and do uh, a translation from a tra uh, from a language file, but in this app, I, uh, it's only created in English. Uh, it has to store the value into uh, the value's username. The input type is normal, it's just plain text. You also can define it will be uh, a URL or it will be a phone number, or it has to be numeric. Uh, and then actually, when you're inserting it, uh, the default uh, settings are, is, are different. Um, Input params is uh, can do a checkup from it has to be a minimal length of four characters and stuff like that, but that wasn't needed for here. Uh, the password is just the same. Um, the drop down list is in the is in the display uh, setting. I just it has a different uh, input type instead of normal. It's a select input, uh, and I define here uh, all the diff the different options that are possible which is the value it has to be, uh, that has to be shown in the list and uh, of the label and the actual value that, uh, that has to be stored. So creating a form uh, is really easy because uh, it's easier than uh, just writing yourself labels and input texts. The form object uh, makes it li life uh, much easier for you. When I do a submit on the form, I, it has to save my preferences and uh, the app will be backgrounded so that the actually uh, tweets can be displayed on the screen. Saving preferences is also uh, storing them first in a local config variable, I get the values from the form. As you can see, there was also uh, an handy, funchi, uh, handy function, function for that, it's just get value. Uh, I want a, uh, the setting from uh, that uh, value in the, within my form. Uh, it's easy. I write a file uh, to the phone. I can uh, set here uh, which kind of um, storage I want. Is it something that has to be deleted when the app uh, is being closed, or does it only have to be deleted when it's being rebooted, is it when the phone is rebooted, or does it have to stay permanent uh, even over uh, firmware upgrades. I want to store it in a, in a settings when JSON file, but I can get it uh, any name I, that, I like, that I want, and I just uh, have to put the JSON uh, into a string and save it into the text. 
loading the saved config file is just done by the digim read file again. So that's also easy. And then I'm parsing it back to a JSON that, uh, can, um, that the app can handle. The getting tweets is almost, is almost identically uh, to the uh, actual search for the net, uh, for the open LDAP address books. It's just an, a new net request. Now to another uh, URL, of course. Also just a get stage status, got your tweets. I uh, do an eval function on them to make them into a JSON format, and then uh, that's it. When the app is foreground, uh, foreground, it is when it's actually starting, when the, the app is starting or when I'm going back to the, the main screen, uh, it has to show my form. Um, I define again here um, the, what the soft keys must do, and it's another way of binding them. When the uh, app is being backgrounded, uh, then it, the, the Idle screen has been displayed, and it has to do the function with a nice name, do it. And function do it loads my configs because I need uh, to send uh, the username and a password. Uh, I make a new scroll uh, because when my text is too long to be displayed on the screen, if I have too much characters, I want to scroll through it. Uh, so I use scroll uh, object for that. Uh, it's actually saying if you are at the end of your uh, maximum numbers of tweets, uh, start from zero again, and then get your tweets again, I'll just uh, in, uh, add one to your tweets. Uh, to your, uh, I clear my interval uh, that has been uh, for waiting, uh, the, only the display time between the different uh, tweets. And then here I just uh, are filling in the labels with the, uh, the username, the number of tweets that are uh, uh, being displayed, and uh, then the actual content of the tweet that has been, uh, I get that from the JSON that is, uh, that the PHP page, page is giving me back. And this one is a nice comment here. If the text of the tweet contains Digium botnet, then it has to dial number four, extension number four. And so you can create a Twitter control botnet of Digium phones with, with apps. That was nobody thinking that you could do that. Would we like to run it? Yeah. Ah, it's saved. I just compressed those both to Twitter online. I'll write them over. Uh, first, I will actually send my tweet to them. Um, what was the word I was using? I'm adding some more tweets so that we can actually see when it's loaded and start calling. Uh, now I will be uploading uh, the app to my uh, Digim phone. I use a uh, curl function for that if you want to see it. I will come back on that later. It's just, uh, you can do a shell script to upload an app and start uh, to make it run. That's a handy way of deploying apps. It's uh, removing the app that is already uh, on it. Uh, installing a new one. Yeah. Uh, there it is. Uh, yeah, this is still. I've now two, two Twitter apps running. Sorry. Uh, that's my second tweet. Normally, hope this will work. And now this phone has to be calling. Yeah. 
Yeah, I made a phone call through Twitter. Okay. I have to unplug this one if it keeps running. Yeah, Tom, could you please explain what exactly what happened there? What happened there? Um, okay. What happened is, uh, we'll go back to the source. What is happening? The app reads uh, the tweets. And what it does is, it is checking, is within the text of the tweet, the word Digium botnet. If it does, it st actually starts dialing uh, the other phone. Uh, so I, want, I only want to show you that um, you can do a lot of things with input you're getting from uh, a user or from a, a web service to do uh, such kind of things. Uh, that was actually what I was trying to prove. How, many t how much time? Four minutes. Four minutes. Okay. We still, uh, it's still booting. Uh, oh, we'll wait. There is an, something else that you can do. I'm actually sending. Uh, what I will be doing is I'm going to uh, open up an app that will uh, ring an extension uh, that is playing a Smoke on the Water from Deep Purple. And then you can jam along with the DTMF tones. Uh, that was not my idea. It's uh, an, an idea of Billboard Magazine Brazil. Uh, and I just made it uh, in an app. You can't hear the DTMF tones. That's a little bug we found yesterday. Uh, okay. One, two. One, two, three, six, nine. One, two, three. Okay, totally useless. <laughs> you can just jam along and play the keys, and then you hear you jamming along with this. Okay. Uh, Actually, I will show you the last app that's created by Digim, and it's actually some real use, uh, having some real use. Um, it's the Q app. Uh, I have one Q at sales. I'm not I'm now logged in. I want an overview. Uh, there are five total calls, four and you can see what the average waiting time was. That's also something great. I wanted to make that myself, but Digim already created for me, so I didn't have to create that. Um, here we only have two minutes left, so maybe we should do some quick questions and answers. Questions? Any questions? Oh, I really blew you away. We still got a minute left. Is there anything else for us? Okay, <laughs> I've still one minute left. Um, yeah, that's not that much. What, can I, what else can I be showing you? Um, yeah, I don't know. One. Oh, I will show you the curl functions I'm using here uh, for uploading the app to uh, my phone. It's very handy when I'm uh, creating the app and I want, just want to upload it. Uh, first, I uninstall the app. Uh, it's the app name. Uh, that was configured in the app and JSON file. Then I do the install of the app, uh, running from uh, getting this uh, from this uh, file. I upload it to the IP address of the phone with uh, user, admin, and, pa and the password, the default password. Then I will start the app. Uh, that's for when an, an app is uh, running at the background. Or I will, I will show the app, then the app will be uh, foregrounded. And here I use the lock function um, to display uh, within my terminal uh, the actual logging of the app that I'm sending through the function utilp and debug. And so I can see uh, what is happening uh, be uh, behind the screen of my app. Uh, well, that's really handy for 
uh, when you're developing, developing the app and testing it. And it's an easy way also of deploying apps to, uh, within your network. You just write a curl function, uh, a, sh a shell script with curl, and it goes uh, through the network. Guess okay. time, time's up. Okay. That was Tom Demore for contr from Control Alt Delete. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. That was very comprehensive. Can we give Tom a hand? Thank you.